We're here today with Naveen Salvadori, who is the co-founder of Foursquare, a quantified self-enthusiast and a hacker at large. Um, thanks for coming by today, Naveen, and uh, it's great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, start off and talk about uh, kind of what quantified self is in a, in a larger sense and why you find it so fascinating. Sure. Uh, so quantified self is, um, is a term that came around um, I want to say in 2008, something along those lines. Um, it was actually a term coined by Gary Wolf and Kevin Kelly, um, two ex-editors of Wired. Yeah. And they put together this, this kind of concept, this idea, uh, and assigned sort of like this movement and a, and a whole bunch of meetups around this, this concept. And they brought a lot of hackers and number nerds from all around the world who are already doing these things under one umbrella. And the idea of quantified self is basically their motto is uh, self-knowledge through numbers. So by tracking more things about our daily lives, about our bodies, about our work, about our sleep, analyzing the patterns over time, can we actually improve something about ourselves? Yeah. And that differs for every single person, um, but that's, that's the basic idea. Through individual numbers or taking all these numbers into a, into a bigger group of some sort, can we actually affect change in the future about our bodies and our, and our lives and so on? Um, and that's, that's the general gist of it. Um, it's actually something that I think people have been doing for a long time. You know, every time People think that quantified self is just something that you know a handful of people do around the world. But if you really think about it, almost every one of us does it. Every time you step on a scale, right. you're essentially quantifying yourself. You're informally quantifying yourself every time you say, you know, I can't have, I shouldn't have a late dinner after yeah. it's already 11 p.m. I can't, I can't sleep if I don't, if I, if I have dinner now. So you're kind of doing something, right? It's it's an on and off, and um, so without even knowing it, we're all kind of members of this movement. Um, so my interests have actually gone back many, many years, and I, uh, it's it's. It comes and goes. You know, mm -hmm. it comes when I have a certain goal or something like that in mind, and I start aggressively tracking a lot more data. Uh, and sometimes I just don't care about it, and I just kind of let it collect data in the background. Let all these different devices. These days, I carry a lot more than I ever did. What kind of devices do you use? I mean, you mentioned you carry a lot of them. Um, I've only yeah. ever heard of people using one or two. Yeah, I actually just use one or two for the most part, mm -hmm. but I have tried um, pretty much all of them, uh, just from a curiosity perspective, and. Uh, partly just because I just want to see what the difference in between each one. And I kind of like seeing them also kind of progressively get better and better over the years. Um, so I think the ones that I have right now are, I think the ones that practically everybody carries. I, you know, I have the We Think Scale mm -hmm. and the uh, Nike Fuel Band and the Jawbone Up, um, the Bases, uh, the Pebble to some informal degree. It is, it is also a quantified uh, app platform, I guess. Um, and then a handful of others like the Fitbit and and so on. I just ordered actually the new We Things uh, Pulse, yeah. which is the one you wear on your on your waist. Um, That's actually I, quite a few devices. I mean, you, you don't use them things. all at the same time. I don't use right? them all at the same time. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the walking kind of Android. Yeah. Uh, I use different <laughs> ones at different times. You know, when I'm when I'm at the gym, I'm less likely actually to wear something around my wrist. Wrist. Yeah. Uh, I used to wear the bands when I went to the gym, but nowadays I just can't. I can't kind of focus on the workout when I have it. Yeah. Uh, and when I run, I usually don't take anything with me. Um, I hardly ever take a phone with me when I run. Mm -hmm. But when I run, I usually wear a watch because it's just easier for yeah. me to not have to worry yeah. about. I've actually heard this whole concept that you're talking about of like measuring yourself and using data to kind of um, reach your goals described as uh, humanistic intelligence. You mm -hmm. know, that this idea that humans and computers can become intertwined to the point where one augments the other, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, I, from what I remember, you were recently working on something that is actually uh, very much in that space, your, mm -hmm. your personal API. Mm -hmm. what, what's the whole idea of this personal API, and why would someone want a personal API? Yeah, um, it's actually something that I've been wanting to get out there for roughly two years now, like two summers ago. And uh, last year I gave a small talk about um, just quantified self mm -hmm. and all of these concepts. And in preparation for that talk, I thought, well, I shouldn't just get on stage and just out my mouth, maybe I should just show some data. You know, yeah. I like to code, I like to uh, uh, show off something, show off a little demo. So I decided to just to quickly hack together something around my data, just telling the story of one month of my life. April of 2012, I gave the talk in May, and I lost something like 10 pounds, and I was very aggressive about writing everything down and uh, getting fit and, yeah. and getting back on track. Uh, and I thought that was a good 30 days, it was a good thing to, to talk about. And um, so the numbers actually told that story behind me as I was giving the talk. And then I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized like I'm not really great at doing visualizations. I'm not a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. um, but what I am really good at is thinking more about the numbers. So I kind of like just 
uh, kind of marinate in the back of my head for a little yeah. bit. And then about two months ago, I decided, why don't we just put the numbers together and just release the numbers? Partly because, and there were actually maybe a, a couple of goals there. Number one, I just wanted to see a virtual version of me. Yeah. You know, that, that is to say, me inside the machine, me represented entirely in the ones and zeros, as people would call it. Um, and, and just play around with the idea of this, this digital copy of me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I could get all my devices to sync with the digital copy as, as close to real time as possible, the better for it. Yeah. So I don't have to wait until the end of the week until I plug the device in. Yep. If I could get it as close as possible, that would be great. So that's what I did. And I think as a part of that exercise, it meant bringing together different data sets that I know about myself. And the second thing I wanted to play with there was just the idea of uh, privacy to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, so what does it mean? You know, All of our, our check-ins to some degree and our tweets and our, and our uh, last FM music squabbles and everything else, they're already pretty much in the open, in the public, or to a, available to a bigger audience than we ever imagined possible even five years ago. Uh, so I just wanted to play with that idea. So what does it mean, what does it really matter that people know how much I weigh? Yeah. You can kind of just by looking at me, guess the range. Looking at anyone, you can sort of guess the range. So what does it mean that they know it's exactly 146? Uh, and I think partly the idea was to, to kind of start that conversation. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean that you know I took 10,000 steps today and I have you know, this much of a weight, and I went on a run, and, and so on and so forth. Before we came in here, I actually uh, read up a little bit on like the terms of service of a lot of these different services, mm -hmm. and most of them retain the right to distribute your data in some way, right. whether that's anonymized or not. You know, it varies right. from service to service. But you know, how, how do you kind of feel about um, advertisers and you know? perhaps even like the government or an insurance agent? Like, how do you feel about other people sure. having access to your data? Yeah, sure, it's definitely on top of their minds these days. Um, you know, I think the short answer is I don't, I don't, I don't quite know. I yeah. think part of the reason I want to kind of experiment and play around this space and just get my own things out is just to question some of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, to live in public for a little bit with that data and then see, see sort of what happens, a little bit of an experiment. I yeah. could always take it back, yeah. isn't it? Uh, no, one, no one else controls that data for the moment except right. me. Um, so it's kind of like tipping, tipping my toe into the water a little bit here and there. Uh, and I, you know, it's not just to say that I'm doing it, I think a lot of others are doing it too. There are a couple of other enthusiasts, even in the quantified self or even outside of it, that, are, that have been fans of this and have been testing it out for a while. So like Buster Benson is a, yeah. is a friend of mine who, uh, if you go to his homepage for the last few years, he's just basically had, a, it's a, it's a real-time document that updates different stats about himself. Mm -hmm. Every check-in goes up there, uh, every photo he takes and it goes into the stream. Uh, you don't see what the content of the email or any of the stuff is or who he's sending it to, but you can actually see how quickly is he answering emails, how much of a backlog does yeah. he have, has he reached inbox zero. So I think a lot of us, you're right, the makers at the very tip of it have a different opinion than the users that yeah. come later, but the makers are kind of questioning these things and we're kind of the guinea pig slash dipping our toe into the water at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess there's even a sense of uh, if you make all of your data public, mm -hmm. then in some ways it actually gives you more control over it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not necessarily being used uh, in part or in a way that is not contextual. You know, yeah. like you can control the context to which your data is distributed. Exactly, and I think that's the way we're playing around with it. Instead of someone else kind of having access to all of my devices and the scale at home, and them kind of pushing me, I don't know, weight loss pills or something like that, yeah. I'm, I'm the one that kind of has the, the power over this and, and designing the systems and, and uh, have the ability to turn it on and off. Uh, I, I, uh, I actually don't use a ton of quantified self devices, mm -hmm. but I, I am a glass hole. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard that described as a sort of quantified self device uh -huh. because it enables you really to, to film your daily interactions, to track where you're going, to kind of um, you know be augmented by a computer in a way that is not really uh, available with smartphones yeah. um, and I've noticed actually that there are some people who are fascinated by it and who kind of love the concept of this but there are just as many who are kind of angered or scared by it yeah. you know, have have you experienced any social stigma against your measurements where I think you sort of might get into trouble or where like, people start questioning it is where you're collecting data on behalf of someone else mm -hmm. right so I think the reason maybe people have freaked out about the Google Glass uh, I think maybe this is the example you're thinking about is if I'm wearing it and you're not wearing it, or vice versa, yep. you're tracking movements without my permission. You're tracking me without my permission. Uh, so if I hadn't opted in, if I hadn't let you and allowed you to share this with your group of friends, uh, it would feel very creepy to me. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do with that data. Yep. Uh, 
that's like the the second level of privacy. It's like instead of just the government watching you or some corporation watching you or uh, or, or something along those lines, you know, all of your peers are watching you, yeah. and we don't know the answer to that. I think we sort of know the answer to the first couple mm -hmm. to some degree. It's like you should do it. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't do it, but if you do, here are the guidelines, right? Security cameras in public yep. spaces. Here are the guidelines. The police can can do up to this level, but we don't have such rules for peers. Yeah. What can a man that's just walking down the street do or not do? That's true. Um, we have all these camera phones everywhere now, right? Even before we get into even the Google Glass, mm -hmm. always on video capability. Uh, anyone can take your photo at any given time on the street. I've certainly felt that as I sort of entrust more and more of my life to the digital world, that mm -hmm. my memory gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we'll get to this like weird meta circle where we're using quantified self devices to improve our memory, which are already like ruining our memory. Or 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 any any device yeah. really it doesn't have to be necessarily collecting data. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're probably right. We're probably that way with uh, email already to some yeah. degree. Yeah, I, mean, I, I certainly know that like I'm much less likely to remember a specific place. You know, I'm a very heavy Foursquare user and. I no longer need to remember a place I've been because I can look it up, right. which is extremely valuable. But I also wonder if that is causing me to forget it in the first place. Yeah, I had lunch with a friend of mine yesterday, also kind of in the mobile space. We've been working together for many years. And I asked, like, do you know your phone number? And most people's answer, I, I do because sometimes I use it as a, just kind of a, a way to log in or something. Yeah. But he, uh, he said most people would say no. They don't even know their own phone numbers these days, wow. especially on mobile. That's, so. that's crazy. Are you uh, kind of concerned at all about these devices becoming so normal and so uh, common and accepted that there won't really be a stigma against those types of abuses of the devices? Or is that even an abuse? I mean, uh, you know, I think there are certain employers that, are, that have been doing that for a while. I think mm -hmm. CVS is probably new, but if you think about it, the the uh, the military has been doing these things for a while. Fair you point. need certain things in order to accomplish the task at hand. Yeah. And if you're not up to a certain fitness level, you won't be able to do it. I don't know what that means for CBS, but <laughs> clearly in the military, that matters because yeah. your your peers are your, their lives are at stake. Yeah. Um, and I think it'll probably be a little bit of a combination. I think I think most of the stigmas will probably go away to some degree. Uh, and I think there'll be a handful of rules or kind of just guidelines for how people and, and, and peers and employers behave. There's kind of like some unspoken rules and probably some written rules that state and federal governments make. Yeah. Um, but we haven't figured out what those things are. I think those those will come at some point. But I think for the most part, I think the stigmas will go away. I, I was just thinking about this the other day and having a conversation. I think, you know, people maybe five years ago were just so afraid of just releasing their location to anyone, yep. even for small brief periods of time. It's not. And I think what's happened in the last 10 or 20 years is that that just keeps accelerating. We've gotten so good at it. Storage is very cheap. The sensors are very cheap. There are sensors in practically everything these days, uh, in our shoes and our clothes and most certainly our phones and, yeah. and, and cars and so on. Uh, and Eric Schmidt actually has a great quote. It's, it's something like, we've collected more data in the, two year, in the last two years than we have in the last in the, in the time before that to the start of human evolution. Wow. Something along those lines, right? And, um, and, and I think so the next stage, I think the same is true for quantified self. I think we're in that stage where we, we get excited because, wow, we can put sensors on everything. Uh, we can quantify pretty much everything uh, in our lives. Uh, maybe the next stage is making that and optimizing that and making it easier. Mm -hmm. So that means things like the Moves app, for instance, which yeah. just constantly tracks you in the background. And then at the end of the day, you kind of just go in and review your day and, and fill in the gaps. Uh, you don't have to think about it. When you do need it, when you're sort of thinking like, how far did we bike yesterday? Yeah. You can immediately see it. Um, you know, that means things like the, the, the WeThink scale, for instance. It's a habit that we've been used to for 50 or 60 years. And uh, the only thing it does, it just makes it a little bit easier. Instead of you having to enter it, puts it into a spreadsheet somewhere yeah. for you. Um, and I think that's going to be the next phase. And I think after that comes what uh, what we hinted at, which is how do you make sense of that data? Yeah. I think I think it's a uh, it, it's still some ways to go before we get there. But I think that is the next evolution, which is how can we kind of bend this data to inform us better, to change something about ourselves, to um, to inform the future products yeah. and so on. Thank you very much for coming by. That was really great. Um, I, I really look forward to kind of seeing where your personal API goes as well as, you know, where Quantified Self as an industry goes because, you know, it's really kind of in its nascent stages. So. Yeah, sure. But, uh, Thank yeah. you so much. Thank Thanks you. for having me. This was fun.